every fan of Soulsborne games remembers their first Souls game. Their first experience. The first experience of being smacked in the face and realizing that there is a desire to keep on going nonetheless. How strange it is, isn't it? For me, it was not a Dark Souls, as for, it was for most of people, and not Demon Souls. It was actually be it was actually a lesser known title. It was bound by flame. I remember when when I played a game. Whenever you play any game, first thing that is striking you is the level of difficulty. You know, how difficult the game is. Or how easy it is. Derived from that, you can say if the game is entertaining at all or not. If it's worth playing, you know. <laughs> if it's too difficult. Is it worth playing? If it's too easy, why would you play? <laughs> so here comes the thing with Souls games and their being worthy of playing, despite the fact that the difficulty is quite high. I actually don't believe that, that Souls games are as difficult as they're being portrayed. Try and go to some PvP in Warzone, see how good you are. What kept me going through Bound by Flame? What kept me going through Dark Souls 3? That was the second game. And I think that the answer to this question would be some kind of a sense of awe. So, based on Bound by Flame only, okay, it'll be easier to simply put it in terms of one game instead of trying to analyze the whole genre. I remember you've been this, this... This is how the game begins. You're this absolutely jacked mercenary that is kind of cocky. And you're going to defend some kind of a temple, I believe so. Um, shrine, whatever. And you gotta find undead. And you find that fighting those undead creatures is fucking difficult as fuck. I actually died to the tutorial enemies. And I think more than once. And I was like, what the fuck? Oh, stamina is a thing. <laughs> you know, you, you, you can't just go cocky and Skyrim your way through, you know? Like, you, you can't do that. You can't do that. You gotta actually, like, put some effort and some skills. And so, as the whole thing is going, you defend, you know, the the shrine, you have to use some traps, you have to use a lot of skills, some dodging involved, a little bit of stealth. Uh, you gotta back... By the way, there are some spoilers, right? At least for the very beginning of the game. You gotta back to the shrine because you are overcrowded. That's a typical thing, you know what I mean? Like, player isn't even getting a choice whether in a plot they are being uh, defeated or not. You know what I mean? So you have to defeat all the enemies that you have to defeat in a certain stage of the game, but then there's a cutscene, oh my god, there are so many of them, we got it back. You know, like, you don't even give it a chance, that's classic. Then you go through more of the enemies, they're really difficult, there are different kinds of enemies, and you have to develop different tactics and stuff. But then there is this giant fucking dude, and I remember actually feeling, I was a teenager, and I remember actually feeling that there is no fucking way I will ever be able to kill that dude. Genuinely speaking. Honestly. There was this giant undead with giant hands and hit horns and stuff. And I was like, oh my god, this guy is fucking huge. There is no way. And like, the way he was presented, like, absolutely destroying everything around. I was like, no way. No way, this is not going to be an enemy. This is just a cutscene. But 
it happens to be a, an it happens to be an enemy. And so first they just have to run away from his attack. I think he's trying to destroy the building and you have to try to you know like run away and stuff from him. But then you you, you get this strange power from a fire demon because the ritual went wrong. And you can actually challenge him. And it's a very interesting boss fight. He's like far, far bigger than you or he's far more powerful than you or but because of this new power you actually do stand a chance. You know what I mean? Souls Gaze from From Software did a better job than Bound by Flame and that is why I always come back to those games, not to the Bound by Flame itself. Because you never get a superpower from a fire demon. The power that is holding you, carrying you through the events of the game and all the bosses is the power of your skills of simply getting good. You know? And maybe, maybe that is exactly the factor that actually gets us through the games. We're all losers. Honestly, we're all losers. Not only gamers, like people in general, honestly. But even comparing myself to other people, I always consider myself a loser. And as loser as I was, at least I could get another hundred of tries on this boss and actually beat it, and then beat it again, and then beat another one, and go to another one and finish the game. And it kind of feels like you are a better person at the end of the game than you were before. You look the same, you sound the same, you act the same, but now you can kill all those bosses, you know? Now you can do it. Now you can do something that seemed to be impossible and far greater than you are. That's how all those bosses are being created, that they look so intimidating. You can actually do it. And, you know, video game is far, far easier than anything else that you could ever wish to achieve in life. In a, like, career-wise, or in sports, or in relationships. It's way easier to achieve any of those things in video game. So the video game is like a wake-up call. Hey, you can. You can. Whatever you're struggling against, whatever is so big that you can't comprehend it, you can do it. Give a couple of tries, change your tactic a little bit, level up along the way, put a little bit more efforts, study the movements maybe. There are some things you can actually do. Go for it. And you can do it, you can achieve it. Maybe it is this feeling of me knowing that I can. But maybe fell in love with all those games so much. I was the Elder Scrolls fan, since I remember. Since the first game I ever played in Morrowind. I always was. Brilliant, brilliant storytelling. Incredibly beautiful, interesting open world. But I'm not coming back to those games anymore. Very rarely, and very briefly, if I do. Because none of those games are giving me repeating, re repeatable experience of me getting good. Because whatever you're doing, getting good just feels good. <laughs> and it's the name. Name is kind of a spoiler. Getting better at your diet, getting better at your fitness, getting better at your relationships, getting better at your work, getting better at your driving, getting better at your cooking, getting better at your cleaning, getting better at fucking anything at all. It just feels good, whatever you're doing. Whatever that is. And so think about it. You feel so good at some pixels changing in front of your eyes. And so if they change in a certain way, you know, like legend fell air of fire destroyed or whatever you're seeing if those pixels bring you so much joy you can find that joy in anything else anything else really because it is 
not for the goal that we play, it's for the process of self-improvement and seeing that you maybe are not that much of a loser as you thought you are. That's that's the beauty that I see in Souls games. That's that's my experience. <laughs>